five, really good. four, three, two, one. No. No. Come on. <laughs> You know what that sound means. Sponsored content? Yes! This is the death of creativity. This is the no. death of This is the height of it. This is the height of it. This is the roaring 20s of creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's against the spread! Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, Thursday Thunder, only we're No, picking- Mike, no, Mike, let me nothing. stop you. It's nothing like Thursday what? Thunder. Yeah. That's what I was getting to. Because it's <laughs> against the spread. You guys are contaminating what we do around here by just allowing DraftKings to boss us around. Uh, normally, I would put my foot down saying, hey, tail doesn't wag the dog here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I was first pitched against the spread, I was like, Yes! <laughs> Why? Pacino like Pacino? Yes. That's, Why? That's, that's, I, I they don't... told me the pitch, and I was like, yes! Okay, yes, you can contaminate our soul and yeah. get, uh, you know. I, I, I don't know if you noticed, Dan. He's gambling again. Yeah. Well, I, I've noticed that he's gambling again. I've also noticed that the gambling community in general hates what we do with this show <laughs> on the <laughs> Gambling Network. <laughs> I've also noticed that. And so now we want to be the show that gives them good gambling information while not giving them good gambling information. Against the the spread. spread. Can I try this then? Can I be involved? I'm going to offer you some bets here. Yeah, No, 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 no. No. You only pick one. Yeah. As you know, we have a running tally of who's doing well and who's not. Yep. And at the very end of whenever this sponsorship agreement ends, that person will get a prize to be determined. Perhaps Green Pringles. Courtesy of? Against, against the, the spread. spread. And, and, and DraftKings. And, yeah. and DraftKings. Yeah. Uh, against the Spread is brought to you by our friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the code Dan. Which, by the way, if you log into DraftKings Sportsbook right now, you will see Dan's beautiful smiling face with his weird wet hair at the top of your screen if you scroll weird. right a little bit. Yeah, and you will also see Jessica's smiling face. And I wasn't at all jealous. Use the code Dan when you sign up <laughs> on the app for a limited time offer for new customers. We've got a bit Seriously, of Seriously, though, great pl- placement. We've got a bit of a problem around here in that you can imagine, right? Uh, for every place that we've arrived, whatever new place it is, recently it's been like the fandom of Kansas City serious sports fans or Buffalo serious sports fans or 49ers serious sports fans. It- but imagine how the gambling community is receiving our show and gambling information. Your hair is oddly wet in this photo. I, uh, why was it? It wasn't weird. I looked greasy. Were they trying to make me greasy, or was I it, am I just? Is I, it don't the, know I don't know either. what happened there. Was I having a milk thistle problem? Was it my liver and my drinking? Brian greasy. Nice. Oh, no. Wow. Don't Dan. Wasn't on the list. Don't Dan. Don't even you know look what? at him. Nope. We need him. Nope. Don't do it. No, it was bad. No. It was bad. But and your punishment is you have to sit out. No. Oh, again. again. Mike. The the no. Sorry. Consequences. No, Can I take the under on my penalty box minutes? Out. Dan, kick us off. A Brian Greasy joke. Dan, it's what, your turn this on. Is, what this? Against the spread. Yeah. All I want to bet. You tell me how to do this. You just pick one game. Against right. the spread. Right. You're telling me that I can't do what I want to do. I think. Uh, Taylor just came in here, and Taylor uh, knows that I'm obsessed with run differential. And he just came in here to tell me excitedly, do you realize what the Oakland A's run differential is? And what I told him is, do you understand the money I've been making the last six weeks just betting the A's are the most terrible thing I've ever seen? Like, shouldn't be in Major League uniforms, unbelievably embarrassing. Uh, I just keep betting for the A's to lose by more than one run. Go ahead and make, can we make it more than that? I just keep betting. No, no you just you just pick a game. Yeah. But just help me you do. You just pick a side in, in that game. But help me do against go, the A's. Oh, against, against the spread. Against the A's. Help me do. They're uh, playing the Mariners tonight. What? Okay, just maximum amount of whatever is the A's are terrible. So you're going to take the Mariners minus one and a half, a.k.a. 
against the spread. Thank Man, you. I d it's really hard to be bad at this game, and you found a way, so congrats to you. Okay. Charlotte. I don't even know if I understand the game, oh, so, so I might have you not won understand? Here, 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 here. <laughs> Let me explain it. You, you pick a game, right. you see a side that you like, uh -huh. and then you take the side that you like right. against the spread. No. That's a ticket. All right. Well, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> let me, we, let me, we let me can, work it out. Do you want me to explain it again? I think I'll you go. need to. I think, <laughs> you need to. I think we'll, you we'll come I back need, to you. I need my Chicago Cubs are playing my New York Mets tonight. The Cubs have been on a very <laughs> terrible, terrible streak, but Marcus Stroman is pitching, so I'm taking the Cubs. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. I'm, 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 all right. Are you ready now? <laughs> I don't have a bet. Uh, oh, get huh? one. You got. You don't. I don't, 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 get, it. I don't get it. Get you one. What, you don't like the board? <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing I like on the board today. Um, what are you talking about? Okay, I'm gonna take the Red Sox. Oh, you're terrible at this. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back so to you. Why get out of here. Why do the you think about content this? people hate how this we do this? Awful. Awful. All right. All right. Sorry. I'll go, and okay. you see how I do. It, okay. okay. What do you mean you're going? How many? Bets I'm going. I'm go. Everyone makes a bet against the spread. All right, I'm going to go Major League Baseball. All right. I mean, is bored. He is doing a board again. He is like, he's like, really? I, have to, I used to be somebody. You guys are going to keep propping me up here to go against the spread. I'm, I, the NBA is going on right now. Yeah. I have opinions. Play, play your cards right, champ. You may get back in this game. All right. Last night, the Tampa Bay Rays moved to second in run differential. It's the first time since the fifth game of the season. They are no longer leaders in run differential because they lost 20-1 to 1 to the Toronto Blue Jays. So I'm betting on them to bounce back today. I'm going Tampa Bay Rays. Against the spread. Take it, Tone. In a game I will not watch, I'm taking the Florida Panthers. Minus one and a half on the puck line. Against the spread. Jeremy Tesh, hey, you're up. Zach Gallen may win the Cy Young, former Marlin. Uh, he was horrible at his last start. Killed the bird. So taking the Arizona Diamondbacks tonight over the Philadelphia Phillies. Against the spread. Now, Charlotte, do you get the game? Oh God, I feel like I've. I feel like you know when someone explains the rules of a board game to you, and there's like a marching band going off in your head, and you yeah. can't. That's um, me whenever anyone explains card game rules. I think board I'm panicking. Game. I think I'm having a, a real <laughs> moment. <laughs> just just, just pick board. a game. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm taking <laughs> the Boston Red Sox. Okay. Why am I? But I keep but, doing but do it. Just but do, do it. The thing. Who are they playing? They're playing at the. Los Angeles. Angel. No, you don't have to do that part. No, you don't, you don't have to do that part. <laughs> I don't know. Just, you're doing okay. the voice in the wrong um, part. I'm taking the Red Sox. Okay. To win. Uh huh. <laughs> um. Against the, the Spread. <laughs> oh my God! I was gonna have a heart attack. Yeah. He did it. A panic attack, that's what we're going for. We accuse her of stealing the chips. A panic attack. attack. <laughs> oh, my God. Amin says that he has a stat of the day. Mike sure has run away and isn't behaving according to Metal Arc rules. This guy, is he on strike from this job too? Yeah, he's. Uh, there's awful, awful stuff going on with the writer's strike. I think uh, I think right now uh, the one of the objections is if you look at just Raging Bull, writers are getting erased. They're not being called writers. They're only being called creators. Like when they go back, AI is now retroactively taking away from people writing that they've done even on classics. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose. Probably, because this thing's about to get dirty. Months and months of dirty that you are about to see. HBO Max and elsewhere, because I'm looking, where's Bill Maher? Where's John Oliver? Where have they been? I want to watch these shows. Oh, wait, they don't have writers. They're going to be gone for months.
They can't do – those shows can't be done without writers. Bill Maher can't just get out there and do that show unless Thank he's you. got his writers. And a lot of people are struggling as well with the technology – of what's happening with HBO Max, which is as simple as just go to Max and HBO doesn't want its name associated with the crap Discovery's doing. Good Lord. Just go to Max and get a different app and you're looking for succession, but you got to change apps. And if you're over 50, you might have trouble doing that. I'm, I'm sick of this. Did you know, Dan, that HBO Max is now Max? They've been telling me this for months, and yet they were not preparing me to down, for downloading a new app just called Max. And now the... Oh, wait. Five-hour mean- phone call. Yeah, HBO Max app doesn't automatically become Max. Oh, come on. Wait, yeah. so this I whole- found this out yesterday. When they were giving us all these ads of it was Brian Cox being like, I need a fire breather, and then the House of Dragon, they could have just been giving us a tutorial and like, hey, if you want to watch your favorite shows, here's how. This is this is hearkening back to last year when I said, I'm glad my grandparents are dead so I don't have to explain Peacock to them because Notre Dame games were on Peacock, the Notre Dame Toledo game specifically two years ago, which Mike... Jason Candle. Jason don't need to get into it. Anyways, I mean, he he botched that bad he did. time management. He did. he did. That was a big fat L. You guys were gonna catch at home. Would have been a would have been a big OC hire though for Miami though somehow. Yeah. But anyways, I digress. So now I'm going to be staring down the barrel of a six hour phone call with my parents and my loved ones this weekend ahead of the one of the biggest season finale series finales. In a couple years, probably on HBO Max, which is now going to be apparently on Max, but at, at, at HBO Max still might be there, but it might not be. It's and they're going to have to log in. The and place they're gonna to have go to download for a HBO. App. I don't get it. The only thing I will say positively about this is apparently you can make Guy Fieri your profile picture on the new Max app, which is a feature, not a bug. So I'm very excited How about that. How did like, Cinemax become like the. Because that's, that's what the Max in HBO Max is, right? It's yeah. HBO and Cinemax. And so now it's just Max and uh, like all the execs at Cinemax. Are they high five and like, yeah. Is there a Cinemax tab? No. I haven't seen the interface on Max. There, uh, let me explain this to you because Amin hasn't seen it e- either. And yeah. I just learned this this week. I've been going to HBO Max. That's where the best stuff is, period. And I like the color purple. Not the movie, the, the actual presentation. You don't like the movie Why do we? No, the, the no, movie. I li- I li- I oh, mean, you don't like the movie, I, now, Mike? I, I love, I love the color purple. I even saw the trailer with Fantasia Barino. I think she's going to win the Oscar. Sounds like you don't like the movie. I like the movie, the color purple. You just said. I like the movie and the musical. He said it though. I like. Can you imagine if American Idol has not one but two Academy Award winners? We've got. Are you ready for that? That you don't like the color purple at a divided time in America. Be careful. I said I like the color purple. I don't like the color blue so much. Why they changed the color on me? They didn't just change the color. What they've changed to mean is you have to go to a different place. It doesn't just transfer over. When you go to HBO Max, it says this isn't working anymore. Really? This is closed. <laughs> this doesn't. You got to go somewhere else. Your internet's not going to connect here. You have to download another app. And I do believe they're going to lose a good many people who just simply don't know how to do this of a certain age. They're not going to be able to get over there, get their password, and figure this part out without the help of the kids. So- this is the weird part. They couldn't figure out just change the name of the app. They had to like make us download a new app. Dude, man, these Discovery people look. They're the worst. Uh, yo, I, get my phone. I mean. Did you see the head of Discovery got booed at a graduation? At at a you should. And that wasn't the writers. That was the students saying, "Pay your writers." They yeah, were, but uh, also, also, don't make me download another. Yeah, app. man. They like all this. By the way, Jessica's holding up a very sad phone that has like the HBO Max thing. Sorry, we're closed forever. All the good HBO memories. HBO Max is now Max. What? How am I going to explain this to my old ass family? I just I, I, this doesn't mean anything, and barely is English. It, it, so many memories on HBO Max, like Mortal Kombat. Remember when that came oh, out? This is a time. I, I'm Godzilla still getting used to Kong. HBO Max not being HBO Go anymore, <laughs> and now they're switching it up HBO on me to Go. Max. It was HBO Now for like a yeah. High I'm like now, I'm now. just trying to watch my shows. But it's it's, it's, it's my, but my it's all ridiculous. They're doing all this to us. Why? So that 90 Day Fiance can find the little nook in between Succession and Game of Thrones? How ridiculous is that? Hey, Discovery, keep your trash TV on your dumb okay. app over okay. there. Okay, hang on a second. It's There's trash. There's a He's lot right. of good Discovery shows. L- name one. Uh, For the love everything of Everything on Food Network, <laughs> yeah. first that, of all. That is true. Name one? I mean, a lot of people, a lot of America likes... I can do a top five. Shark Week is show. I'll get back to you with the top five. You know what? 
a lot of America does, and a lot of America can take their trash ass over to the Discovery Plus app and stay over there. Keep HBO Max where we got, like, quality programming over here. We're writers, real do writers, get not HG, reality writers. Do they get HGTV on this? Yes. Uh, do they do? Well, they have jo- wow. Joanna and Chip Gaines. Magnolia Network, I think, is, like, its own thing yeah. now, though. Do but they, they even have wait, wait. Discovery? It's not, in, it's not on Max anymore? No, I think they, I think it is, but I, I don't L- think that's part let of HGTV let me be, anymore. Are, let me are be both clear. property brothers on Max? Let me be clear. There's only, including the one there's dating only, Zoe Deschanel. There's only three franchises that matter from HGTV. Property Brothers. Yeah. Love It or List It. Mm-hmm. House Hunters. House and, Hunters. And House Hunters International. International. Which any is variation. Part Vacation of, House yeah, Hunters, yeah. too. Very exciting. Any, any House You're Hunters. You're not a Windy City rehab guy. Get out all, get out all these other. Because all they're doing is they're trying to be one not of those a flip three or shows. Flop guy. No, love it or list it. Christine on the Coast. See, they're all trying to How be. How about Tiny Homes? I love Tiny Homes. Tiny Homes. Oh, I tiny love Tiny Homes. I will watch. Homes. Oh, Tiny Homes. Oh, they got you a mean sign. Yeah. It looks tiny like a mean yeah, sign. Yeah, see, he's smiling. Look at he's smiling. But tiny we, Homes. I don't live in New but York. But House Hunters anymore. International specifically does something when you watch it. Yeah. You're like, I, I should quit my I, job and move to Aruba. Oh, yeah. this is incredible. Oh, man. It's like, it, like they're like, and they always have like these weird existential crises. It's like, Michael wants to live closer to the shore, but Francine wants to live closer to work or like sh- the shops or whatever. Also, it's like a little house. Is like a million dollars. Like that's our budget, yeah. a million. And it's like, what do you do? I'm a moving, teacher. They're moving like, from like I'm a professional zero. mermaid. <laughs> My budget is seven million dollars. Ooh, enjoy Macau. <laughs> Can we please enjoy Charlotte Wilder, alleged young person, uh, wandering <laughs> into the wilderness and the fray of? Let's thief. She I, wants her shares. I just want to know where my shows are. <gasps> I'm. I. I don't think I'm. I am way older in my head than I am in my actual years. I'm I'm an old like not cool old. You know, people say they're an old soul. I'm I'm old in the sense that like I don't know how to make things work. Like I don't know how to. I just want my shows. I'm old in the sense that I just want my shows. I just want my shows, I, dude. I've fallen into it just because I also have the Xfinity remote and I just go sports. <laughs> just I talk I re- into it sports. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse any sort of voice activated technology Good for of you. any yeah. kind. I also nope. uh, when the Premier League is on, I also do it in the accent to test it. Oh, same. Yeah. Why? I do mean, you do that too? Manchester City. Manchester United. Why? Why? Because, man, I'm not I'm not having some device listen to me and learn my voice and then try to like mimic it at some other oh, point. IOS is gonna be able to do that after fifteen minutes of training. See? Replicate your voice. See, they're already starting. You guys Chelsea. You guys would enjoy then Valerie laughing in another room at me because I was trying to figure out Max and HBO Max and I just say to the voice activated thing Succession and now Succession of Bridges is playing all over the house on musically and I can't turn it off. I'm interested in this guy's story. He was a linebacker for the Tennessee Titans from 2007 to 2010. He injures his neck running into that monster, Martellus Bennett, because tight ends are way too big in the league and the evolution of the sport is unhealthy for everybody. And he decides to go into politics. So clearly head injured, a Democratic congressman from Texas who is uh, going up against Ted Cruz for Senate in next year's election. And thank you for joining us, Colin Allred. But before we get started, I'm just going to say, uh, Ted Cruz seems like a real asshole. <laughs> what do you want me to say to that? Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, I just, I don't know whether you're running. Like, I don't know why you got into politics, how you got yeah. into politics, where you got into politics. But my guess is, if you come from the discipline of football, you are appalled by uh, that politics isn't merit. Politics is nonsense. That's right. No, I mean. Listen, Ted Cruz wouldn't last very long in the locker room. He just wouldn't. You, know, you yeah, I know you, with the, the you know work you've done covering there in Miami and around the country, you know that the locker room would shoot somebody like that up and spit him out. Like he's a me guy, you know. He's somebody who uh, you know, doesn't take takes credit for things he hasn't done, uh, who doesn't show up when you uh, need him most, and who is constantly just trying to run to the cameras uh, and you know pit people against each other. Obviously, it's not a very good recipe for being a senator, in my opinion. Uh, but on a football team or in a locker room, I mean, that locker room would definitely uh, be like, listen, this guy's got to go. 
But do you understand how or why that wins? Like, I don't know. I'm not politically astute. I would not describe myself as that. I don't know if you got into politics being politically astute. But when you got into politics uh, sometime after 2010 and you leave football, you can't know that America is this bleeped up. Yeah. Well, you know, I do think that uh, cynicism and, you know, uh, fear can work sometimes. But in my opinion, and I think in kind of the American experience, we've seen that it doesn't work for long and that what people really want uh, is to be hopeful and to talk about the future and what we can do together. And, and that's kind of the long story of our country, right? The arc of our country is that we we do sometimes elect people who, uh, you know, are among the worst of us, at, you know, honestly. Uh, but we always have found a way to steadily progress and perfect our union. That's how I ended up serving in the administration of the first African-American ever elected president, uh, you know, in the Obama administration. And so I'm, you know, the first African-American to ever represent in Congress, the area that I represent, uh, is that we make progress. And when you give folks a different vision, uh, you know, I think that they can respond to it. I think that's what's gonna happen this election too. Can you explain to me how it is that you receive someone like Tommy Tuberville who made his fame and name off of the bodies of largely African-American football players now being what he is because you're going to have to work with him here right yeah well you know the thing i uh, dislike most about uh you know people like tuberville uh, is that as you said he knows better but you know coaches you know come from a system of accountability they believe in creating accountability uh, and they recognize and they point out you know, BS very clearly. And that's how you become a, a, become a successful coach. And what I've seen from him, he's just decided just to abandon all that so that he could become a senator. And I'm not really sure that why that would be worth it, you know, to throw away a lifetime of working with young men, probably impacting a lot of lives positively, you know, giving uh, you know, those guys a chance to become something that they never would have become maybe otherwise. And then to turn around and say, you know what, I'm going to pull up this ladder behind me and make sure that, uh, you know, the people that the kids who I was working with, uh, you know, people who maybe don't have as much athletic talent as them, aren't going to have a chance to chase their version of the American dream. I mean, that's not, it's, 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 I think people sense, you know, the disconnect there. And I think that's what you're getting at, which is like, you know, we, if you're going to be a successful coach in college football, particularly in the South, we know who you rec were recruiting. We know the homes that you went into. We know the promises you made to those kids. And when you were coach, I guarantee you, you did care about those kids, but now you don't. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Tuberville said, among other things, uh, that when rape or sexual assault allegations came against Trump, that that makes him now want to vote for Trump twice as much because of the witch hunt, or two times, uh, because of the witch hunt around him. Uh, pair that with the report by the prosecutor John Durham into theories about the unproven deep state conspiracies against Trump. Uh, after that uh, report turned up basically nothing, this is what Tuberville had to say. If people don't go to jail for this, American people should just stand up and say, listen, enough's enough. Let's don't have elections anymore. I wish there was a special investigation into the voter fraud. This is what you're fighting against. It doesn't seem like it's a very fair fight, Colin. You're going to try and fight this fair. And what's happening over on the other side has gotten so overt uh, and so rampantly uh, anti-democracy that I don't know how that wins against your viewpoints. Well, this is not who we are, Dan. I mean, I, I really believe that. And we have to believe that. My experience has been that it's not. You know, I got elected uh, by beating a 22-year incumbent who in, in some ways was a lot like you know, Tuberville or like Cruz, you know, who was arrogant, who was lazy, who wasn't really doing the work, who didn't really care about the people he was representing. Uh, and, you know, we, we beat him even though he'd been unopposed in the election before because everybody thought he was so unbeatable. So my experience has been that you know, if you can present an alternative message about who we actually are and what we can do together, that people will respond to it. And yeah, we're not gonna win every election in every state. And obviously, you know, uh, Tuberville got elected uh, you know, and, and we have to just deal with that now. But one of the things that really, you know, I think most annoys me when I see you know, a coach saying something like that or you know, Trump talking about, oh, well, that was just locker room talk. Not in the locker rooms I was in. And I, I know, Dan, you spent a lot of time in locker rooms too. We didn't talk like that. We didn't talk about, you know, sexually assaulting women. And if somebody did say that, 
then you know the guys who I was around would be like, listen, and I would too. Like, what the heck are you talking about? I mean, we would come down hard on somebody or we'd make sure that something was done. This is not how, you know, the NFL and locker rooms are not places where just anything goes. We have accountability there. And I think that's what people want in our politics, too. And so we have to keep believing. We can't give up. Uh, and I, you know, I, I really think that we're a much better country and our people are much better than our politics. We have to kind of you know, shrink that gap a little bit. That's positive messaging, but I'm just wondering on a human level, when you see whatever it is, Herschel Walker, I don't know, you're probably not old enough to be uh, disappointed by some of the things Herschel Walker used to re represent and what he... Uh, he was in Dallas when I was growing up. I remember him well. Okay, yeah. well, wh who's the person or who, where you get heartbroken? Where you genuine, yeah. where you're like, really? Like, you're going to try, this is the path you've chosen. Right. But he didn't win also, Dan. And we have to remember that, too. Uh, you know, he had, he was running in a state and at a time that was probably set up for him to win. And he didn't because the people of Georgia were like, no, we're not going to let you know him become a senator. And so we have to remember that. And, you know, listen, I mean, the incentive is all off in, uh, in politics right now, where uh, if you can be the worst version of yourself, you can you know pick on people and, and attack people and say it's not your fault that something's going on in your life it's these immigrants fault or these folks fault then yeah you can get some votes uh and that's a shame and, but that's been the way it has been in our country forever uh, but we've also shown that we've had leaders emerge who have led us in a positive direction pulled us together around ideas of what we actually can do and that's how we've ended up where we are which is honestly in the course of just my lifetime dramatically different uh, things that are, you know, now going on, you know, if I'm elected to the United States Senate, when I am, I'll be the first ever uh, African-American elected from Texas. I think I'll be the 12th ever African-American in the Senate period, you know, in our uh, you know long history. Uh, so we have made a lot of progress and we can't forget that. We have to remember who we are. And I think sports teaches us a lot of those lessons. A lot of the, the, the storylines that we most love are about, you know, these great teams that come together and look at the Miami Heat last night, you know, playing like, you know, a bunch of undrafted guys and just, you know, playing all together. We we intrinsically know that and we and we look for that. We just need more of it in our politics. But you're positive. You're doing, po you're saying positive things, but Ted Cruz keeps winning. Like he's, he's won for many, many years being this overt. He's won twice. He won once in an election where basically didn't have any opponent. And then in the last election, he was reelected by two, he got reelected by two points. He, he barely got reelected. Uh, and so in this one, we're going to beat him and we'll send a very strong message with that. Uh, you know, I think that, as I said, my experience is, you know, growing up, being raised by a single mother who was a public school teacher, you know, making to the NFL, going to law school, becoming a lawyer, serving in Congress has been possible because of who we are. And, it, and if, if we were who Ted Cruz thinks we are, then I, I honestly believe that I wouldn't exist. And so, you know, I, I'm not somebody who can who can give up on that. You also didn't answer my question about who's broken your heart. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think you're right about Herschel Walker. Uh, you know, I remember when uh, he was in Dallas and he did, you know, he was doing bobsledding and ballet and he seemed like a very interesting guy. Uh, and, you know, he's become just, you know, the worst version of what anybody could, could think of, of what he would have become. Uh, but, you know, I've seen others. I mean, I think, as I said, there are folks who, when they get a chance, you get a camera in their face and they get some attention from saying something, uh, you know, they'll they'll take it and they know that it's not right, uh, but they'll do it anyway. And every time I see that, it hurts me. Uh, and I've seen a lot of guys who I think, you know, particularly from the athletics world, who've gone into politics, who obviously have forgotten everything they learned when they were on teams. Uh, obviously, they were not, not the same person they were when they were in that locker room, because I know that they would not have made it if they were acting like the way they are now. What are the details that you think are most interesting about what you had to handle or help with handling in the release of Brittany Griner? Oh, um, you know, I mean, first of all, obviously, I'm just so glad that she's you know back playing right now and uh, looking great, you know, had a great game the other day um, and, you know, great debut. And she's going to be dominating like she always does. But, you know, the biggest thing was to make sure that our State Department, who was doing the negotiations with the Russians, who we basically have you know, no relations with whatsoever, uh, and who were almost at war with in, in some ways, that they understood that we were going to support them in the eventual prisoner swap that was going to have to take place. Uh, we knew that the Russians were floating in their media, 
you know, certain names of people that they wanted to see swapped uh, for Brittany. It was always going to be an unequal, an unequal swap. It was always going to be, you know, someone who had done something terrible for someone who had done nothing wrong at all. Uh, but that, I think, also said something about who we were as Americans, that we would do anything to bring home this young American. Uh, and that the Russians just want to bring home, you know, a mass murderer uh, like the, the merchant of death who they ended up you know, trading for. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure that the focus was on getting her home as soon as possible and that we understood and we would support them in that swap when the time came. And uh, when they struck the deal, I was I was glad to see it. Obviously, I'm ha so happy to see her doing well. As a, you know, as a Baylor guy, I love it. And what is the answer to the person who says, well, merchant of death for a basketball player, not a fair trade, even though, of course, bringing home an American life is bringing home an American life. Right. Well, it's not a fair trade in terms of what they've done. And that's not the point. Uh, the point is, is that if we can, we will bring you home. And that says something about who we are that we believe so much uh, in the value of our human life. We're not a totalitarian you know, dictatorship like what they have under Putin in Russia, uh, that we uh, you know, are gonna actually you know, try and look after our own people. It's not like you know, Putin's trying to use uh, you know, the Brittany Griner situation to help any Russians. He was trying to use it to add one more you know, uh, a terrible you know, uh, you know, murderer to basically back to his fold. Uh, and so that, that says a lot about us and about them. And so we can't be, we should feel, I think, good that as Americans, uh, that, you know, we're going to do everything we can to protect our fellow Americans and we'll bring you home if you get in a situation like that. And then we'll stand together behind you. Were you moved in any way by her standing for our anthem? Because a lot of conflicting interests under that flag make people view that flag very differently depending on their perspective, their culture, their experience. And her experience is with a U.S. government who just rescued her. Yeah. Well, everything I was told uh, about the team who went to go get her uh, and brought her back was just how incredibly warm uh, and how kind she was to everybody she interacted with. Uh, she you know, wanted to you know, talk and take pictures with everybody on the team, wanted to thank everybody. Uh, she's gone, I think, out of her way uh, to express her gratitude. And, you know, listen, when it comes to whether or not you want to protest or not, that's your right as an American. Uh, and I, but I think for her, uh, obviously playing that game and, and probably hearing our national anthem probably meant something very different than it ever had before. Uh, and, and, you know, that's important, too. How do you feel about Jerry Jones in your state uh, saying everyone on his team is standing for the flag? Well, you know, listen, uh, I don't appreciate, of course, uh, I think just the overall attitude that Jerry takes to his players. Uh, I think it, it, it comes across. You know, very much as, uh, you know, I'm in charge here and you don't have any say over anything. And if you speak out, we're going to get rid of you. And, you know, I just I to me, that doesn't really make sense for a workplace. It doesn't make sense, you know, for athletes who should be able to express themselves. Uh, but, you know, that's we, we've been we know that here in Texas about Jerry. It's not a surprise. Uh, and I think that, you know, any Cowboys player uh, who wants to express themselves should be able to. Well, we can, we can disagree about whether or not you support their, uh, their right to protest. But in America, in my opinion, we should agree that you have a right to protest. Texans uh, hate politics and love their football. How are you going to get Texans? Uh, you, Jerry Jones, you said it very politely there. Jerry Jones believes in ownership with all of the ramifications of that word. He behaves like a man who has ownership over his employees, and you have to get people to the voting booth because you have to knock out Ted Cruz, who, as you mentioned, didn't win by very much last time and has done a lot of awful since then. I could list it, but it's too long to list. Uh, how do you get people to the voting booth in your state? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, we got to make sure people know who I am. Uh, you know, I mean, they got to know my story. I was born and raised in Dallas, my single mother, you know, the, the path that I've been on, uh, because I think it says a lot about who we are, uh, that you know, we have a community and a state that can allow folks to have a story like mine. And we have to inspire people and give them something to believe in. Yes, we want to make sure they know just how bad Ted Cruz is. But, you know, a lot of people already know that. And, you know, it's amazing to me how people come to me and tell me how embarrassed they are by our senator. And I tell them, you know, we don't have to be embarrassed by our senator. You know, we can get a new one. That's what elections are all about. You don't have to have somebody representing you who, when the state is you know, frozen and people are you know, sitting there in the dark, decides that that's the time for them to go off to, uh, to Cancun on vacation. 
or who right now, Dan is probably podcasting as much as you are because he's doing three podcasts a week as a United States Senator is supposed to be representing 30 million Texans who have a lot of needs and wants and who need a Senator who's working for them. So we got to make sure they know who he is, make sure they know who I am, and then we got to push folks out. And that's been our biggest issue in Texas, honestly, has been just getting enough people to actually be involved in our, in our democracy. I was a voting rights lawyer before I came to Congress, and I know how hard it is to vote in our state. I've been a part of trying to make it easier as much as I can with, you know, to try and help folks comply with these crazy laws we have. So I know that that's part of it, but it's also that not, enough folks have not felt like you know, going to the voting booth is going to have an impact on their life. And what I always tell them, you know, if you're not at the table, you're going to be on the menu because there's going to be decisions made about you and your family that you're not going to support that are not representative of your community unless you're involved in your elections. You can only pick one from the crew's docket. The worst of all of these crimes. Publicly recruited Kyrie Irving to play for the Rockets because he's an anti-vaxxer. Attacked both Big Bird and Elmo's dad because they are not anti-vaxxers. Blamed, quote, slacker baristas for young people in this country needing temporary forgiveness on their student loans. Voted against making it harder to overturn an election. Called for more cops in schools to prevent mass shootings. Flew to Cancun, as you mentioned, while Texans froze. The worst of those is... Yeah, well, you know, the insurrection. He's one of the main architects of the insurrection. I was there on January 6th. I was on the House floor uh, when, you know, the mob was trying to break in. I, you know, took off my jacket and thought that I was going to have to defend my colleagues because, you know, when there's an NFL linebacker, you know, in, in the House, and anytime anything physical happens, everybody looks to me. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> I, I take our democracy very seriously. I, I think that, you know, it's a it's a precious thing and it's easy to lose. It's not guaranteed. It's not written in stone. It's incumbent on every generation of Americans to make sure that we hold on to it and that we preserve it. When you have somebody who actively tried to overturn an American presidential election, they have to have accountability. They have to uh, in, in their next election. That's the way we do things. Or, of course, if, if there was any criminal conduct, which is what we're seeing with the former president. In this case, Ted Cruz is going to have his reckoning in this election, and a lot of it's going to be about those things you said, uh, but it's also going to be about uh, that he, somebody who was one of the main proponents of trying to overturn our election. You went off the board, and you're wrong. It is Elmo. The correct answer is Elmo. Elmo. Uh, thank you. I got you. two little kids. Yes, I, I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah, totally wrong. That, uh, that other thing, whatever that was, it was close, but it was Elmo over Big Bird. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it, Colin. Thank you, sir. Yep, thank you.